Good morning and welcome to our Thanksgiving podcast. Now, as a Brit that likes any excuse to celebrate, Thanksgiving is one of my favorite holidays. And if we ever return to the UK, we'll certainly be taking as much sweet potato and marshmallows and pumpkin pies as our families can possibly consume. Now, this week, as it's Thanksgiving, we thought we'd do things a little bit differently. And we've got 10 experts, some from Coinbase, some clients, that are going to cover topics from macro to Web3 and a little bonus on world, world assets. And we also ask everybody what they're thankful for. But before we get started, a quick thank you to everyone that helped make this podcast happen today. So that's everyone that sent in their video clips and, of course, our fantastic production team. I will do my full thanks at the end for those that are still listening. But without further ado, let's get right into it. Okay, so good morning, everyone. My name is Tanya Reif. I am the CIO of Send the Digital Assets. What am I looking forward in the macro space from a top-down perspective? I believe we are in a more constructive environment, forward-looking. That is mainly for three reasons. On the macro side, I think the rates are topping out. Uh, the Fed looks like it's at the end or nearing the end of its hiking cycle. So the outlook from that front looks a lot more constructive. In addition, all the liquidity indicators, those even beyond the money supply, like reverse repo, TGA, and so on, and even those liquidity indicators outside the US, like China, for example, are pointing on the green side to much better liquidity environment, and that should be supportive for the crypto asset class. On the regulatory front, we also have had very good positive developments. If you think about it, in the last couple of months, we've had four very positive regulatory rulings. We've had the Uniswap ruling, we've had the Ripple ruling, we've had the Grayscale ruling, and we have now the fair value accounting. So all this suggests to me that the winds may be changing on the regulatory front. Of course, we are all waiting for the potential approval of the Bitcoin ETF, and who knows, perhaps the approval of the Ethereum ETF. Um, but in general, I hope that we just get a lot more regulatory clarity in the months forward looking, and that should be another positive. And finally, perhaps a little more controversially, I believe the geopolitical risks around the world may be positive for Bitcoin flows. That's mostly because in a lot of emerging markets, access to a US dollar bank account as a flight to safety may not be readily available. So a flight to Bitcoin instead may be something we see if the geopolitical tensions increase. So that remains to be seen, but it's something I'm watching out for. And then, well, what am I thankful for? I'm thankful for health. My father just came out of COVID, so I'm looking forward to celebrating a healthy and happy holidays uh, with him and the rest of my family. And I'm also very thankful that this November we had a much better November in the crypto asset class than last year. So very happy about that and very optimistic for the future. Happy Thanksgiving, everyone. Hey, I'm Seth Gins, managing partner at Coin Fund. Um, what what I'm most excited about right now is um, actually seeing the organic development of uh, the the crypto ecosystem come together in a really nice way and start to be reflected in price. Um, this is a result of the the fact that crypto is open source, open competition, and global, and it takes zigs and zags that are unexpected. Um, but but it does in fact start to come together in a workable, exciting way. We have a really rich tech stack now that's within the Ethereum EVM ecosystem, seeing that in the Solana ecosystem as well, and we think we're going to see a lot of new base layer um, ecosystem ecosystems emerge in this bull market as well. Um, I, I'd say macro starting to become a tailwind with uh, the dollar peaking, real yields peaking. That also makes this more exciting as we start to see things uh, priced into the market in a positive way. Um, and then I think this next bull market could actually see the uh, emergence of the super cycle. What people were waiting for last cycle um, and, and was cut short by real yield spiking and more regulatory pressure, I think now we're going to have um, the big regulatory de-risking, real regulatory clarity coming over the next few years. And we'll probably have investors trying to call the top, maybe prematurely, as that regulatory de-risking happens. And that will create a nice wall of worry um, that the market can continue to climb into 
uh, what should be and could be a, a nice multi-year appreciation period. What I'm thankful for is uh, the support of friends, family, um, the Coin Fund team, our LPs. Um, it's been a difficult 18 months. Um, I think we're on the other side of that now, but I'm, I'm incredibly grateful for the support over the, the last two years and looking forward to, to a bull market. Um, bull markets are a lot more fun. I'm Dave Duong, Head of Research at Coinbase Institutional. On macro, the biggest point of contention among market players has been around inflation. But most of the views here have been pretty low conviction. I've very much been in the camp that we're already on the path of disinflation, and we have been for the last few months. With fiscal expansion easing, I think there's going to be more signs of economic vulnerability, and that's going to hit the US dollar and probably help crypto. Overall, though, I think we have a pretty nice setup going into year end, because what markets want is growth to be subdued enough that it keeps central banks from hiking rates, but strong enough to meet or exceed consensus expectations. And so far, that's what we're getting. So since July, our market thesis has been defensive in Q3 and constructive in Q4. So far, things have been playing out exactly as we've expected. In crypto, we can see more capital rotation into ETH and alts at the margin, but I think the asset class remains anchored in Bitcoin, given that the ETF and the halving are still two pretty compelling narratives. What am I thankful for? Well, I am thankful for production editor Richie McAllister, who works every week editing this podcast to make us sound fantastic for our listeners. I'm also thankful for, oh, you know, I should also mention my family. Um, that's really important crap. They're probably going to wonder why I didn't mention them first. Uh, Richie, if you are listening to this, can you edit this section to put my family first on that list? Um, I should also probably add my coworkers. Actually, you know, why don't you just let me know what I need to put in and we'll just fix it in post. In 1850, J.P. Morgan's uncle, James Pierpont, wrote a song inspired by Thanksgiving called The One Horse Open Slag. It was published in 1857 by a Boston music publishing house and was largely considered a failure. Of course, that's the song that we all know today as the holiday classic, Jingle Bells. Also noteworthy because in 1965, the crew of the Gemini Six surprised Mission Control by producing a small harmonica and some bells and performing Jingle Bells from space, making it the first song broadcast from space. When I came across this story, I thought there are so many things in our lives that we value and that have endured uh, that were not particularly noteworthy upon arrival, like uh, Jingle Bells, the one horse open sleigh, but also puts me in mind, of course, of Bitcoin and digital assets. So I'm looking forward to the many things that are likely to happen in 2024 that will bring Bitcoin and other digital assets to the mainstream, uh, not the least of which are uh, like the likely approval of spot uh, ETFs. What I'm grateful for this Thanksgiving is Coinbase. I think in the United States, we need a champion that has the integrity and the facts and the wherewithal to really make the case to our institutions, uh, our regulators, our government, and to investors uh, for, di for digital assets. And I think Coinbase is that company. So I wanna wish you all a happy Thanksgiving. I'm Jennifer Murphy of Runa Digital Assets. Hi everyone, I'm Cosmo, Portfolio Manager at Pantera. Going into next year, I'm really excited about a few areas in Web3. The first is the continued growth of projects at the intersection of AI and crypto. One example of this is BitTensor, which is an open source AI model training protocol that's resulted in the creation of free alternatives to popular tools like ChatGPT and MidJourney. I'd encourage you to try it out yourself using ReplyTensor on Twitter. Another example of AI and crypto synergizing is Render and Akash, which are using the superpower of crypto, token incentives, to coordinate a decentralized network of GPU providers in an extremely supply constrained end market. The second area of Web3 I'm excited about is gaming. There is a huge influx of fundraising for games in 2021 and 2022, and next year marks the two to three year mark for many of these games, which is the typical timeframe of development. I expect we'll see a lot of awesome things get launched, especially using infrastructure providers like Married Circles Beam and Immutable. And of course, Thanksgiving is a time for giving thanks. First and foremost, I'd be remiss if I didn't mention Pantera's limited partners who've entrusted us with their and their constituents' hard-earned capital. I do not take it for granted. I'm grateful for that privilege and continuing to work hard to earn more of that trust over time. 
I'm also thankful for all the mentors who've helped gotten me to this point. This includes for my time at Hitchwood, James Crichton and Guy Barron, and my time at Apollo, David Samber and Matt Michelini. And most importantly, I'm thankful for my wife, who I'm sure, like many other crypto spouses out there, continues to surprise me with how understanding she is of the crazy demands of our industry. Happy Thanksgiving, everyone. This is Vance Spencer. Quickly, you know, 60 to 90 section, seconds on what I'm excited about in Web3. I would break it into three categories. The first is DeFi continuing to scale. Um, both the derivatives exchanges, the spot exchanges, uh, the bar lend, uh, things like Maker. Um, it's just been really impressive to see how much free cash flow they've been spinning out. And I'm excited to see that continue to scale and, and really kind of have the first protocol that hits a billion in earnings. Um, the next thing I would kind of highlight is just games and, and the launch of Alluvium on November 28th and, and continuing into next year. Very excited about that. And then, you know, of course, the ETFs. Um, how could you not be excited about the prospect of institutional net inflows and a re-engagement of Wall Street with the space? So, you know, those are the things that I'm very excited about. Lastly, I would kind of just highlight, you know, Bitcoin and ETH and, and generally the, the idea of bringing money that isn't debt uh, and new forms of store value to the masses, whether it be Wall Street or Main Street. I continue to think that's extremely exciting and what a lot of our space is eventually working towards. Um, and, and, you know, what am I thankful for? Um, thankful for the community making me feel like I'm a part of something and, and getting to build and invest alongside, you know, everyone who's in the industry. This is really the only industry that I've uh, really ever known. Um, I've been in it for almost 10 years and seeing how it's evolved and getting to evolve with it has been, you know, really special. So a lot to be thankful for. Um, and uh, of course, thankful for a counterparty and, and partner like Coinbase. So thank you. Hi, my name is Sid Shaker and I lead the blockchain research team at Coinbase. Uh, here we look at everything to do with data and uh, on-chain uh, behaviors, especially in terms of flows and where activities is flowing to on-chain and also where interest is, is being generated. And, and looking at the ecosystem from this lens, one area in particular I'm pretty excited about right now is um, on-chain gaming. Um, everything from you know vast sci-fi universes like Parallel, the trading card game, uh, to extremely simple um, pet uh, breeding experiences, uh, Tamagotchi games like Friend Pet on base. I think there's a wide variety of games to explore and, and that are currently being launched in, in the ecosystem that I feel would potentially bring crypto to a new audience and, and uh, really start to utilize the blockchain in ways that we previously haven't been uh, seeing. So I think it's a good area to keep an eye on. And um, one particular area, you know, just in general, what I'm, what I'm thankful for uh, in crypto is the folks that have stuck through this entire bear market, um, who've maintained an interest, who've uh, had the kind of willpower to continue trying new applications applications as they come out. I think those are the kind of folks, the true believers that I'm really thankful for and that uh, are still around and here. Hi, I'm Jay Prasad, one of the founders of Definitive Finance. Definitive is an institutional platform for automated DeFi yield and, ex and execution. So today, two plus years into the bear market, I'm really excited by the resiliency of DeFi protocols. While several centralized venues have faced challenges and downturns over the past couple of years, DeFi protocols like Aave, Compound, Curve, Balancer, Uniswap, and many more have not only been hardened, but have also been quietly improving, all without the typical hype and fanfare that surrounds crypto innovation and the crypto space. I actually believe that uh, we're on a cusp. We're at the cusp of a major shift in the crypto landscape. My prediction is that the usage of DeFi will match that of CeFi in the coming years, and institutions who have become comfortable with CeFi will want to access the superior real yields and the, the some and the sometimes the deeper liquidity in DeFi, which bodes really well for what we're building at Definitive. And finally, on a more personal note, uh, I am thankful for the, to the Coinbase family. I met my co-founders while working there. Coinbase Ventures invested in my startup, and the team co continues to support us uh, through our journey, through ups and downs. So hope everyone has a great Thanksgiving. Take care. My name is Victor Bunin, and I lead the protocol specialist team over at Coinbase. 
I'm most excited about ETFs being approved in the United States. Specifically, I'm most excited about ETH ETFs and other stakeable assets because I believe all of those assets will be staked. And so at Coinbase Cloud, we recently powered the first ETF with native ETH staking out of Canada, and I'm thrilled to be able to bring that same feature set to the United States in order to enable everybody to participate in the crypto economy, regardless of their technical acumen. And then I'm most thankful for Brian being based. Brian Armstrong leads with conviction, and I am fully on board with the mission of advancing economic freedom in the world. And it's really important to me that I get to work with great people on hard things, and through that becoming great friends, and that we're entirely mission focused. And so today in this world is becoming more and more important to continue to focus on the mission at hand, not get distracted by anything and keep advancing for the causes that we know are right. And so Brian, thankful for you. Hi everyone. I'm Anthony Basili, head of asset allocators and on-chain solutions. For this week's call, we're gonna focus on tokenization. Tokenization, also known as real world assets, has been a wildly important and successful theme for digital asset markets this year. Already we've seen RWA, catapulted into a top 10 sector within DeFi. This is on the back of investors chasing yield with new products like tokenized treasuries. Now we see more than $750 million of tokenized treasuries on multiple public networks. In addition, we've seen tokenization continue to grow with the large tier one institutions like banks, asset managers, and infrastructure providers globally. They're announcing new POCs, new tie-ups, and strategic launches almost daily across different verticals and regimes. We're beginning to see signs of slight global harmonization across regulatory bodies as well. And I'll give an example. On October 30th, the Monetary Authority of Singapore announced a, a collaboration with other regulatory regimes. So this was a collaboration with the FSA in Japan, the FCA in the UK, and FINMA out of Switzerland, which allows a large regulated institution to operate on a public blockchain with their peers in those different jurisdictions. This is a critical next step if, with the evolution of tokenization and why here at Coinbase, we think it's really important to pay attention to. We've recently launched a new service called OnChain Solutions that helps large institutional players navigate the changing leaves of tokenization. So what I'm thankful for, I'm thankful for time time to spend with my family this holiday season, and also time to spend with all the builders out there geeking out on new technology primitives, geeking out on digital identity, and geeking out on ultimately all of us building a better financial system on chain. Thanks. I absolutely love those conversations. So many different insights from different people with different backgrounds across different sectors as well. So we'll, we'll see how this, how this works, and we may do some more of these in the future. Now, what am I thankful for? I'm thankful for the amazing production team and compliance team that helped make this happen. Believe me, all the magic really happened behind the scenes. I'm thankful for my Coinbase colleagues that are all helping to increase economic freedom. I think we're gonna look back on this in decades to come and be incredibly proud of all the hard work that we put in. I'm incredibly thankful for our clients that are helping build this industry with us. It's been a tough 18 months, but we've all stuck together and we're certainly coming out stronger the other side. And lastly, I'd like to thank my family for putting up with me, simple as that. But enough of the podcast. I want to get you all back to your Thanksgiving dinners where I hope you're all talking around digital assets and helping people understand all the great work and all the great change that we are impacting in this industry. Thanks so much. And we'll see you next week.